good morning students welcome to the class of the old man and the sea in the earlier classes as you remember we have discussed the theme and the summary of the story the old man and the sea we have taken the character of santiago in this particular class we are going to discuss two important points first we are going to talk about relationship between santiago and the marlin and in second part we are going to discuss about santiago's dreams and daydreams so let us first begin with the relationship between santiago and the marlin did he have a choice in the manner of killing the marlin if it were a young marlin smaller than his skiff he might have struggled against it for a day or two more until it succumbed out of sheer exhaustion or he might have clubbed it to death but it was a huge oversized marlin 2 feet longer than his skiff and over 1500 pounds in weight and it was impossible for him to haul it over into the skiff even if for some reason or the other the fish succumbed to death if he somehow managed to land it in the skiff he would not be able to row it and would have been forced to swim alongside the skiff until he drowned and died or fell a prey to sharks and other powerful creatures in the sea therefore it stands to reason that the only course left to santiago was to harpoon it causing bloodshed and attracting the sharks the alternating being another day the 85th day of catching no fish but the marlin caught the bait and was hooked becoming inseparably linked with santiago leaving him no alternative but to fight the marlin and vanquish it or get killed in the process but there was a time when he killed a marlin by clubbing her on the head santiago recalls the episode which made him and the boy sad for he played the cruel villain in the love story of a marlin couple this episode is described in sentimental terms which is on page number 42 of the book it's a long paragraph so i'm not taking in this particular class it is reminiscent of sage valmiki's sadness when he saw a fowler killing one of a pair of mating birds out of that sadness was born the first verse which inspired the great sage to write the great sanskrit epic the ramayan it would be unfair to call santiago a sentimentalist as gary burner does in his excellent study the old man and the sea story of a common man even as it would be in bad taste to call valmiki a sentimentalist burner defines sentimentalist as someone who assigns unwarranted or excessive emotions to people creatures or objects he faults santiago for interpreting the mating habits of the marlin as if they were like humans or better like geese who mate for life He quotes Professor David Gorup, director of the Pacific Game Fish Research Foundation in Kona, Hawaii, for scientific support to say that marlin do not mate for life. Burner goes on to say Professor Gorup's knowledge is it is likely that the so-called mate of Santiago's hooked female may be a female marlin that follows the hooked female out of curiosity, circles out of perplexity at the hooked female's odd behavior and leaps out of water in the puzzlement not grief or farewell. Uncharitable critics might charge both Valmiki and Santiago with model and sentiment but we should remember that fellow feeling is common to human beings animals and birds fellow feeling springs out of the basic emotion that what happens to one member of the community might happen to another at some other time this is a strange mixture of the emotions of curiosity and fear therefore we need not be so uncharitable as to accuse the writer or the character of sentimentality or causing excess emotion Valmiki and I might not be aware of the mating habits of birds even as Santiago might not know enough about the mating habits of marlin whether it is a male that stayed with the hunted marlin or another female the response would be without the same the feeling of every man's death diminishes me for i am involved in mankind as john dun writes in one of his devotions is a basic human feeling on such occasion one may call it curiosity if one likes it but it is an active anxious curiosity caused by empathy rather than idle curiosity the anxious feeling of what is happening to my fellow creature now may happen to me later and might have caused the marlin to jump up and see the dead marlin in the boat gary burner questions santiago's claim of strangeness and profession of love for the marlin and underlines the fact that he's just a common man but a sage old man to quote yet if he has such tender feelings towards these noble marlin why does he continue to fish for them why doesn't he fish for smaller fry for quantities of tuna or dolphin or porpoise or whatever else brings a good price at market buy rather than for a day single big fish 
By anthropomorphizing the Marlin of both the flashback and the central story, Santiago shows his inability to come to terms with his identity as killer and his need to continually apologize to creatures to whom he feels compelled to attribute human traits. At the least, he is a mixed up human being, not a sage old man. The very fact that he assigns human traits to the Marlin and the other denizens of the sea and entertains tender feelings towards them marks him out as a strange old man. He feels sorry for the flying fish and the birds who have no chance against the one single lasting thing, the stream. In the same way, he feels sorry for the Marlin but seems to be unaware that he has no chance either, which is a general delusion into which everybody falls until the sharks strike. But then, even though he is rudely disillusioned, he fights like a hero without admitting defeat and his bravery and endurance mark him out as a strange old man. Santiago fights the heroes of yore who kill their foes in battle and drag their corpses, lashed to the chariots as Achilles did with Hector's corpse in Iliad. He fought a losing battle bravely unwilling to surrender like Arjun or Mahabharat, fighting with Lord Shiva in a hunter's form. Santiago loses his harpoon to the dentiso and his knife, gaff, or triller and the short club to the gallons but still there is fight left in him. The epic hero Arjuna bring home boons and divine weapons after his fight with Lord Shiva. But Santiago's prize is the skeleton of the Marlin and his boon is humility which is expressed by his remark to Manolin. They beat me Manolin, he said. They truly beat me. By they he meant the sharks. <clears throat> we observe that in the old man on the sea, they operate through the Gulf Stream against the backdrop of which the little drama of Santiago's struggle is enacted. It may be said that Santiago acted wrongly and unethically is not realizing the Marlin after killing it. Instead of lashing it to the skiff and trying to take it home as a trophy, when he respected and loved it too much. He was born to be a fisherman and it was his duty to kill fish, but sometimes he saw a noble fish whom he respected but he had to kill it to fulfill his life as a fisherman. When Arjun saw his kith and kin and elders whom he loved and respected, Ranged against him in the Kurukshetra battlefield in the Mahabharat, he did not find it in his heart to fight and kill them and wanted to leave the battlefield. Lord Krishna, his chariot driver, taught him that he was born to fight and kill and should not chicken out and run away or feel sentimental and lay down his arms. Santiago loves and respects the noble Marlin, whom he calls his brother and enemy at once and is forced to kill it as a fisherman. There is nothing unprofessional or unethical here as he acts like an honest, fearless and tough fisherman with tender human feelings. This is very much in keeping with the New York's portrait of Hemingway's brawny, hairy arm holding a rose. Santiago conducts himself in the true epic tradition and his act in lashing the carcass of the Marlin should not be misconstructed as a self-glorifying power trip in the words of Gary Burner. So this much about the relationship between Santiago and the Marlin. Let us in brief talk about Santiago's dreams and daydreams. One of the recurring dreams and daydreams of Santiago is about the lions playing on the beach. His memory of standing on the deck of a ship and seeing the lions on the African beach is the source of these dreams. Another source of his daydreams is his memory of the great baseball hero DiMaggio. Both are real images, one in the animal world and the other in the sports world. These daydreams indicate Santiago's ambition to excel as a fisherman and underline his strangeness. Why does he not dream of other lesser animals like monkeys, foxes or rabbits? He wants to draw strength and determination to recharge his batteries by thinking of the lions. In the same way, his daydreams of DiMaggio help him to draw fresh inspiration and energy and measure himself up against a great player. He identifies himself with the king of the jungle and the king of baseball and these two images form part of his reserve energies from which he draws in time of need and exhaustion. There are other images which are born out of his memories and his life on the shore. One is the image of himself as a champion in the hand game and the other is the image of Manolin, his alter ego who serves as the boy in himself calling up his youthful energy to assist him. The images of the king and the jungle and the king of baseball and the image of himself as a champion in the hand game emerging from his memory all underline his ambition to prove himself the king of fishermen. The self-test and achievement is not meant for publicity or fame or money, but only for self-satisfaction and self-fulfillment. 
Santiago does not dream of his wife who's no more. He does not dream of women nor storms, nor of great fish, nor fights, nor contest of strength. He only dreams of places and the lions on the beach. It is natural for many old people to dream of places and not to have erotic or exotic dreams involving actions and happenings. But he still thinks of himself as a good fisherman and is in love with the sea and his denizens. But as he is very old, he takes the help of his memories and dreams of symbols of power like the lions, the great baseball player DiMaggio and the boy. But he does not dream of the boy as the boy meets him every day and in fact is part of the mental makeup. The boy is the tyro and the old man the tutor. The boy is like the old man's own son. Even though the old man cannot exercise paternal authority over him, the boy is an image and inspiration which he leans on. Besides, the boy is always in his mind and makes him wish for the boy presence. He misses Malanin physically but still draws energy from the thought of him. So students, <clears throat> in this class we have taken up two important issues concerning the novel, relationship between Santiago and the Malin. And we have also talked about Santiago's dreams and daydreams. In the coming classes, we are going to talk about Santiago and Manolin and about the other sea creatures discussed in the story. Thank you so much.